Uh -huh. Oh yeah, hey guys, it's Awesome A, and it's the day we've all been waiting for and expecting on this channel. I had this movie at the top of my video list just because I knew it was going to be a trip to talk about. For some reason, I really like talking about Illumination movies. I don't know if you can tell that yet. It's been a studio that has produced so many misses, but also movies that are so easy and fun to talk about in pop culture media. That might be because they're designed to be discussed in pop culture, nobody can escape an Illumination ad, but it's also because there's no doubt about it, but they are fun and kind of addicting movies. I can watch Sing and feel a little bit of happiness. The Buster Moon car wash scene always gives me a little chuckle. I'm entertained all the way through their fun movies that cause no deeper thought, and that's refreshing sometimes. Have I made videos calling Sing bad? Yes, it's not a breathtaking movie. They can do better, but at least they have that fun factor. Without it, they wouldn't have survived so long in the movie industry. Without the fun factor, they would have became one of those random animation studios that put out the Playmobil movie or whatever. I might be saying this because I'm in a good mood, or maybe it's because I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of working for them one day. I really want to make my own personal minion at Illumination headquarters. Do you think Illumination has like an animation training where you're forced to make them a minion? This leads me into my next point regarding fun and that is the fact that I think the Mario movie was destined to be good. Yep, that's the title. Hear me out. Don't confuse good with great because that's not what I mean. I just mean good. And I'm gonna get into why Illumination was bound to make an entertaining Mario movie at the end of the day, no matter what. All they needed was to have Mario and pair that with Illumination's poppy visuals and it was bound to be successful just for those two reasons alone. Obviously. This video is not some crazy take, I'm just pretending it is so this video stays entertaining. When the Mario movie was announced in 2021, everybody was having a field day with the cast. Looking back, yes, everyone was overreacting, but it was so entertaining to witness on the internet. Definitely while people were still stuck in their houses, this was the highlight in the movie. Oh god. Oh god. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> And when we got the first teaser for the movie, you could see in real time the switch up of opinion, and this was becoming the most hyped movie of the year. There was no in between on what people were thinking. They either hated it, or they were hyping it up and changing their profiles like it was going to be Citizen Kane or Paddington 2. We've gotten memes, we've gotten full out wars on if this movie would be good. People were saying it was going to be the highest grossing best movie of all time, and I just wanted to see it. Although I did kind of take part in some of the Mario movie Twitter, I couldn't help myself. I had to get on the bandwagon. I had to get those likes. But nobody will prepare me for Twitter now. I am so pumped for the next few months of everybody's opinions being shared. Every movie reviewer on YouTube was preparing their thumbnails, wiping off their review caps, and we got flooded while I sat back and wondered how they got their thoughts out so well, because after seeing this movie, I am all over the place on my opinion. But enough backstory, let's get into my Mario movie review. Let's go! I can't do the Mario voice, what was that? The following will have spoilers because it's almost impossible to talk about this movie without mentioning them, but I'll have chapters in this video that are segments that don't have spoilers like the music or the characters or the outro, so click on those if you haven't seen this movie yet. Right off the bat, this movie has one of the strongest openings I've seen in an animated movie in a while, and yes, I'm kind of referring to the introduction of Bowser and then that sequence going into the commercial but that we had already seen most of in the teasers, and I've seen countless people who predicted exactly that, and it was very obvious that was how it was gonna start, but I'm mostly talking about the entire segment with Luigi and Mario in Brooklyn. It was so fun to see this world, and I'm so mad it lasted like 10 minutes. We got to see the bros celebrating their win, they got bullied, the whole dog mishap, which let you know, yes, this is made by Illumination. Seeing Luigi stand up for Mario and Mario's bravery kind of show in this moment was amazing. Also, this is just proof Hollywood is starting to notice YouTube movie critics. This is the most film Twitter line, oh my god. Is not a commercial. That is cinema. Do you think Illumination will watch this video? I don't think so, but if they are, please let me voice a minion. The movie lets you get hooked instantly and we get to see more of this loud city. Mario and Luigi chatting with their family was one of my favorite moments. The dialogue in this scene is really good. I felt part of the family. Mario, seriously, what were you thinking with that commercial? What? It's supposed to be funny. Don't listen to them. The world laughed at Da Vinci too. But sadly, that all ended in about 12 minutes when Luigi got sucked into the pipe and everything after that was so quick and Mario just accepts this more than you think he would. Not that that was a bad thing. Of course, Mario isn't gonna react. He, he, he's getting sucked into a pipe. He is kind of shocked for a few seconds, but then he's like, okay, whatever. The entire world of Mario and Brooklyn and plumbing was gone in a matter of seconds and we didn't get to see more of that until the very end. So that kind of sucked. If they had stretched out this opener and done the same with a more drawn out plumbing montage, this opening would have been pitch perfect because it builds the world so well and colorfully in a way I think Illumination has done the best in the past. They always 
just kill it with the first 10 minutes to 20 minute opener, and everything goes downhill from there. However, the middle half of this movie doesn't suffer as much as other Illumination middle halves. It's mostly just the pacing problem that everybody has agreed on, which I'm gonna get into. The best thing about Illumination movies by far is you can just look in the background and see a random character doing something, and their designs almost have more appeal than the actual main characters, in my opinion. I would watch a full length movie on this old man right here. I wanna know his story. I wanna know his struggles and highlights of growing old. Sometimes I'll just make it a day to watch Illumination background characters. To give the studio props, I've never seen a studio spend so much time adding little intricate stories into the background. It's my biggest gripe with cartoons when they forget to make the background characters blink or at least look alive. So thank you, Illumination. You know how many minion kissing moments there are just hiding in the background of these movies? Look at Gru just hiding in Secret Life of Pets. I don't know if I already said it or how many more times I will say it, but the visual look of this movie is so bright and colorful, it's perfect. The cartoon look of Illumination just fits Mario and Nintendo to a T. I'll get into why I think Illumination actually fits so well with the Mario world. Somebody added me on Twitter asking me if I like the water in this movie. Cause I'm kind of the animated water guy, and uh, we don't see enough water in this movie sadly. And when we do, it's very dark and nighttime. I really wished we got some of that Mario Odyssey water. I would have felt so refreshed. I love Mario Odyssey water. I want to drink it so bad. Mario and Toad head to go see Peach who can help him find his brother. This whole sequence is basically Shrek. Mario is Shrek and Toad is Donkey. Peach is Fiona. Also, the music in this entire sequence pairs really well. They utilize the actual Mario music, the bare minimum, but I'm happy. It's something I feel wasn't accomplished too well in the Sonic movies, don't hate me on that. We get to see all the little toads in the scene, another Illumination background character galore. They got little toad shops that's so adorable. Mario then gets to Peach where we witness some of the most awkward dialogue ever written in an animated movie. I'm sorry, I love both of these characters, but I wish they worked better together in this movie. It feels like two pieces of cardboard talking, but they get the job done and she teaches Mario to fight, because in order to defeat Bowser, he's gonna need a black belt in running and dodging Mario easter eggs. The rest of the middle half follows some of the best references you can get in a Mario movie. Definitely holds up in the fan service department, which is really the only thing they needed to accomplish. Furry Mario, check. You got the fire flower, check. I got flashbacks to when I was seven and literally spammed the life out of that thing. We get a reference to the actual Donkey Kong arcade game, double check. And Donkey Kong just smashes Mario with barrels. I'm talking about barrels, guys. Also, in case you're wondering, I love the depressed star with all my heart. He was the highlight of the movie. I hate all nihilism, but this star can stay. I downloaded this clip from YouTube of Lumily for that part. And tell me why half of it is Puss in Boots 2. Like, th there, nowhere in the title does it say Puss in Boots 2. Before seeing this movie, I heard lots of complaints about the movie having a non-existent plot, which really worried me at first as this was a movie I was hoping and praying would break Illumination's boring story record. I was also wondering how this movie would work if there was no plot. <laughs> However, after seeing it, I don't really agree with this. I feel like there is a basis storyline that is set up. Which sure is very easy to understand, but it's still there and you can kind of make a visual map of how things are going and motivations and conclusions and whatnot. Is it very predictable? Yes, but it still feels like Illumination did have some sort of story plan. <laughs> For starters, I loved how Illumination chose to basically switch the roles of Luigi and Peach in the story. Leaving Mario to find Bowser's lair and save Luigi instead of like in the games where he saves Peach, which is so genius, one of the best calls in cinema, and it came from Illumination of all studios. It gave so much more motivation to Mario's character, and if they had built up their brother Bond a tad bit more, this would have been one of my new favorite tropes in an animated movie. Yes, the story change does lead leave Luigi to have like no purpose to the story for half of the movie, maybe more than half. When I first saw this clip in the trailer, I really thought Luigi was going to be going on an adventure through evil forests and maybe we were going to get a Luigi's Mansion reference. Everybody assumed Luigi was going to have a drawn out side journey and mission and we were contempt with that until we saw the movie. But hey, I think that just leaves even more room for a sequel. I'm guessing Illumination had this planned out and plan on giving Luigi more screen time in a future movie. And if they don't plan on doing that, then they need to reconsider because I've seen so many tweets just simping over Luigi. Let's talk about the characters. 
A movie set of characters and the voices can make or break a movie, and I'm very much a character based person. I obsess over characters and their reactions. I have an Emmett plush, South Park plushes, I even have the dog from The Simpsons. I love characters. This movie has the higher up in the character department considering these are already well established characters, but I was still interested in how they would expand them into movie form considering Mario's personality is really tied to his 5 or 10 catchphrases, and I actually really enjoyed most of these characters. Mario and Luigi's personality are really strong. I love how they added a more sensitive side to Mario and a more Big Brother vibe to Luigi. I loved all of the family members. I was super pleased with the fact they made Charles Martinet Mario's dad. If he wasn't in this movie, I would have rioted. The movie does a really good job fleshing out Mario to be an actual character in a movie. They gave him a more humanized look and feel and environment, and it makes it way easier to connect with the Mario character. We're so used to him being this high and mighty explorer who says wahoo and cheers sometimes, but this movie's Mario lives with his parents and also plays video games and is not confident in himself. I was very pleased to find that this movie is mostly about Mario being new to the actual world of the Mario games. It made it seem more of an origin story which in my opinion will set up really nicely to future movies when he slowly becomes more of the leader of the Mario world and knows what he's doing. They really could have just made this movie take place in the prime of Mario's Mario life, but they went right to the beginning of his plumbing career and I ate it up. Although in my personal opinion, his interactions with other characters definitely should have happened more considering this is a movie about him, and he only really interacts with Donkey Kong and Toad casually. If they had at least a 3 minute section where he just talks to Bowser one on one, that could have made so many comedic moments and set up their rivalry more, but no. None of these characters know who he is for this entire movie. Other than that, I thought it was a very solid Mario rendition. Chris Pratt also does a good job with the voice when he isn't going in and out of having an accent it's and not me, having an accent. A Mario. Toad had some great moments and his parts gave me the most laughs. I was worried he was going to become like Luigi and dip for half of this movie, but he was in a lot more than I expected. They really utilized his character. Donkey Kong has some of the most memorable scenes. Hearing Seth Rogen's laugh every scene of Donkey Kong was a jump scare. This man's laugh has got to be artificially made. There is no distinction between each of his laughs. He has a laugh soundboard inserted into his body. You can't tell me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are weird. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> There's this big feud throughout the movie with Mario and Donkey Kong, and I thought that was really funny. The timing of this scene caught me off guard. And well, my dad thinks I'm a joke, too. Yeah, well... YOUR DAD'S RIGHT! You know what? Peach was great, I really like Anya Taylor-Joy's voice. And because of how they switched the roles of Peach and Luigi, it gives Peach so much more time to shine in this movie. She has an actual personality now. She has so many girl boss moments where my jaw actually dropped. This was me in real life. Although her backstory kind of felt very rushed and forced. Like she says how she grew up with the Toads and how they practically raised her. But earlier in the movie, she said how this was the only toad brave enough to join her. So how does that make sense? A toad brave enough to join me. I was so lucky they found me. Raised me like one of their own. And best for last, Jack Black as Bowser. I don't have enough good things to say about Jack Black. He will go down in history as the best casting ever conjured up. I am now okay with any celebrity actor they want to get because I got what I wanted, Jack Black. This man puts his all into everything and becomes the biggest supporter of whatever he's in. He was showing up in a full Bowser suit, he had a Bowser red carpet outfit, he had a sparkling Bowser fit for the Lyrical Lemonade music video, and Bowser himself is the highlight of this movie. If it wasn't for how perfectly they nailed the character, this movie would have almost had no impact. I'm not exaggerating, if Bowser wasn't so good, I would not have made this review. Nobody would have cared about this movie. It really seemed like the writers were just having fun with him, and they were using Bowser and Jack Black's personality to their full potential, and the transitions Jack Black does with his voice going from wholesome or oblivious to angry work so well. Kinda! I'd never marry a monster. Then we are breaking up right now! I remember when they teased a Bowser song in the movie, but I would have never expected we would get the smash hit Peaches. It has been stuck in my family's head since it came out. My dad will randomly start bursting out this song. They missed the opportunity to give Bowser an epic rock song, but you know, Peaches is good too. It was unexpected. Having this big mean creature and then making him sing a love song is comedic genius, so I understand. And it's clear to me this movie has or will make Bowser even more popular throughout the globe. Little kids are not going to wear Mario or Luigi costumes anymore. They're going to be dressed as Bowser. Okay, before we go any further, let's get the elephant out of the room. Let's talk about the pacing of this movie. This is the one opinion everybody has came together and agreed on regarding this movie. 
Everything happened so fast, I found myself in the theater hoping that would not be the case for the entire runtime, but it was. If they had just made some of the scenes 10 to 20 seconds longer or a little more drawn out, then they would have had a, a way better movie, no exaggeration. The pacing of this movie is probably the main aspect that holds this movie from being better than good, because what sucks is it feels like the story is delivering on what we want to see. You have Mario, he does Mario things. You have Donkey Kong, there's a Donkey Kong rap. There's so many Easter eggs. All the things that you would want as a fan and consumer you get, but oh my gosh does everything get held back by how quickly it feels the characters are over something and are moving on. And this would be easy to gloss over if it wasn't for the fact it's just a part injected into the anatomy of the Mario movie. Like I kinda hinted on before, character reactions are so quick. Motivations are there but not explored for more than one second. Peach comes to terms with this random plumber man Mario way too quickly. You get like 10 seconds of her being kinda wary of this man but then she's like, okay let's go do something I barely know about. I don't even know who Luigi is, but she's going to search for him at a location Mario also doesn't know, and Peach doesn't really get that deep on her issues with Bowser and who he is to her, but I guess because we already know who the Mario characters are, they can kinda get away with it. But come on, one little scene where Peach explains who Bowser is to Mario Lego movie style would have made such a huge difference. Unless she already did do that and I just totally missed it. The best way to explain the pacing is that it feels like you can picture someone pointing quickly from one plot point to another on a whiteboard for a movie pitch, and it feels like everything is being explained halfly because they have a time limit. Illumination is just trying to sell the main meat to you. The pacing problem is most noticeable towards the middle of this movie. The entire middle section goes by 1 million miles per hour. Flashback scenes appear and disappear in a blink of an eye, and it feels like the movie doesn't care about these moments as much as the audience does. And there's this really annoying fade in and fade out effect they use for like every scene in these segments, and it just does not clash well with the feeling and intense moments in this movie in my opinion. You'll get a scene where a character spills their heart out and then it just fades to like, I don't know, Luigi looking around. Which both scenes work in hindsight, but the transition to them don't feel as important as they are, so you kinda don't know how to react, it's like, oh, okay, now this scene's gone, okay, fade to a patch of flowers! The pacing problem mostly has to do with character interactions and plot points moving from one to the other, because as for the actual visual side and action sequences, Illumination's pacing shines the best in these moments. You would think it would be the other way around, but no, Illumination has mastered the timing of a fight and big event scene. But everything else they kinda wave through and explain in another nutshell. A lot of this movie felt like a recap to a longer movie. A longer movie that doesn't exist because this is the movie. And like I said, this is fine because it makes the more important parts shine through and leaves any boring filler out, but I'd almost say it forfeits too much potential filler that could make the pacing feel much better and the concentration of its viewers easier. This is one of my favorite sequences in the movie just because how good it looks. Oh my god, the tropical theme. The palm trees and the brownish color tone work so well. I wanted to ditch the movie and build a treehouse in a rainforest and live out my days. This guy was just intruding with swag. I forgot his name. This is the start of the Mario Kart action, and this is one of the only moments where the timing is really nice and it feels like a break from the chaos that's being thrown at you. And we get Take On Me. Unlike most Illumination movies, the popular songs are actually bearable and not embarrassing to sit through. You do not know how embarrassing it was to sit in the theater for Sing 2 and watching a furry sing Halsey. I could not be happier Illumination chose to go for 80s songs and not a modern pop song. Cause I would have left the theater, I could not sit through that in public. Nor would it have even fit the vibe or the Mario timeline. But you know, they could have easily chose like a Doja Cat or Dua Lipa song. Thankfully they chose songs that most of the public all love and it's hard for anyone to get mad at them. Take On Me is a song you can't go wrong with, everybody likes it. I Need a Hero was such a perfect song to choose, and I was jamming. I found out they had originally had an actual Donkey Kong song that would play during this sequence, and now I'm kinda mad. <laughs> They make up for it because there's a lot of Mario music utilized in other scenes, and it balanced it out where it's more acceptable for Illumination to slap in that quick popular 80s song. This is the scene where Mario characters, good and bad, all come into play. It was beyond obvious a Mario Kart scene would be the best introduction to all the characters coming together, but it was still so sick. The neon colors, my eyes were sparkling. You got the entire Kong family. You got Funky Kong just chilling here, in his sunglasses. He was done dirty in this movie, I want at least 10 minutes of him. Imagine the Fire 80 song they could have paired with him. The side villains in this movie are actually such a highlight, their movie designs look so good. 
and and they're also just straight up menaces like i love when movies give a character no reason to be terrible they just are and this guy is that character nobody was bugging him he just wanted to hate to hate this is the scene where i think the movie shines the most and really starts to sink in that this is pure hollywood cinema and not like masterpiece indie movie cinema no this is the best representation of popular cinema the movie industry has to offer rise of Gru had that same effect where it comes at such a good time like summer or winter and everybody unites and talks about it and hype for movies definitely contributes to theater experience it feels really good when every once in a while a movie comes out that everybody is going to see and you can talk about it with them if you mentioned in public hey have you guys seen insert small underrated a24 indie film most people will not know what you're talking about about. But if you ask them if they've seen the Mario movie, everybody is discussing. Wait, never mind, this next scene is actually the best scene. The whole wedding part was so funny, I loved it. The cake looks so good, wait, can someone make this? Off topic, but this is reminding me of when I used to watch this YouTube channel that would just make Nintendo cakes. Can they please do this? I need to look them up. Have they done this yet? This bomb sat down and then instantly went to sleep. Literally me. Meanwhile, Peach and Toad are planning an intense scheme. And if I was paying more attention, I would have known what their plan was. I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh wait, she hit an ice flower? What? Oh, I, I don't remember this. Also, meanwhile, Mario and Donkey Kong are friends now and having the coolest run sequence. Illumination manages to make running so aesthetically pleasing. Same with the ice. Why does the ice in this movie look so good? I'm used to loving animated water, but Illumination ice is taking the stand now. Before we get into the rest of the video, in my opinion, it's time for special guest thoughts. A new segment in awesome videos. Today we have Storytime Animator Infamous Swoosh. You might know him. Let's hear his thoughts. Hey, what's up? I'm Swoosh and I'm in this video now. The Super Mario Bros. movie was a movie I was seriously looking forward to. And in my eyes, it did not disappoint. The visuals were incredible, the voice acting was way better than I thought it was going to be, and it had me laughing consistently throughout the movie, which I myself was surprised by. I don't know how a movie targeted towards children made me laugh for an hour and a half, but it did. It's how animated movies should be. I would say my only gripes about the movie is that it was extremely fast paced at times. And I guess with rewatches, it could be easier to bear because you know what's coming within a few short minutes. But the first time I saw it, when it ended, I was shocked how short it was. Like, I understand that going in, Nintendo fans will know these characters, so we don't have to spend too much time getting to know them during the movie. But it still would have been nice. I mean, like, Toad is just kind of there because he's like a main character in, in the games. So like, mm. He has no motivation or drive whatsoever to be there other than the fact that he wants to be Mario's best friend after knowing him for three minutes. And realistically, that, that makes like no sense. There's also a whole traveling montage that lasts one whole minute that goes through so many beautiful lands that we see on screen for like five seconds each. And that made me sad because they looked so interesting to explore. I, well, I wanna see more. My only other gripe is that there wasn't enough Luigi. So hopefully if they make another movie, they expand the character more and the brotherhood he has with Mario. That's the Mario movie from me. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. Now it's time for my favorite part of the movie, the part where it ends. That sounds like a mean joke, but no, the ending is actually really good. I'm very used to Illumination abruptly ending their movies where you feel like you wasted time caring about anything, but this ending does a really good job of checking off the want bucket list of viewers and Mario fans, and really gives a focus to all the characters at once and yet doesn't feel unbalanced or unnecessary. In doing so, it still has that very fast pacing, but I think just as in the beginning, it all works here because it's satisfying and it gives you all the best aspects of the movie. Mario and Bowser get some actual screen time together, and their fight is actually the first fight in a while from Illumination I felt actually invested in. It was nice seeing an Illumination fight without a minion doing a kung fu kick. It also has an accurate portrayal of a panic attack scene, so just 10 out of 10 for that. They also really play on the idea of how insane of an event the clashing of Bowser's lair coming into Brooklyn was, and I kinda got chills. It felt like the end of Stranger Things with the upside down coming into the real world, and I got absolute chills from this explosion. It looks so colorful. I love colors. Oh my. We get to see Mario's family again, and I love the reactions every character has, especially this part. Let's hear it for the Super Mario Brothers! Someone pointed out on Twitter the fact that Luigi can fight almost just as good as Mario despite being in a cage for half of the film, nor did he have a training montage, and I can't think of this whole sequence the same. I don't really think it's that big of an issue, but I'm just disappointed because they definitely missed out on a gag where Luigi just kinda sucks at fighting, and then Mario has to kinda swoop in and teach him real quick. But oh well. Toad puts Bowser in a jar. Wait a minute, wait a minute! And that's my overall thoughts on this movie. I'm gonna give this movie an 8 out of 10 just because of how good the animation is. I was kinda hesitant to make this video because of how much people have hyped it up. 
you feel almost bad for saying anything other than good. This happened when I did my Rise of Gru video and I was so worried about putting it out because there was lots of negatives I stated, and people were having so much fun dressing up in suits and praising it, and I didn't want to ruin that. But at the end of the day, when everyone's hype goes down, as a reviewer, I just want to give my real opinion that will last after the excitement. There was a couple days when this movie first came out where everybody was attacking anybody who stated anything other than nice opinions on this movie, and I don't agree with that. Movies, definitely Illumination movies, will always have cons, and stating the good and bad should be reasonable, even if little kids in the comments are gonna get mad at you. That being said, I still really enjoyed this movie and had a great experience with it, despite having a few problems with it. And after actually seeing this movie, whether we'd like to admit it or not, it is so apparent why Nintendo had partnered with Illumination of all studios to make this movie happen, and I highly doubt the impact would have been as big if it wasn't for this company. Illumination is undoubtedly so smart at marketing and making their movies appeal to big audiences and getting their movies out there. They're a theme park juggernaut, their commercials are like Subway Surfers gameplay, and I just don't see that level of promotion from other companies, and though we would have probably got the hardest storyline from a company like DreamWorks, I think it being too good would have messed up the universal appeal. That might sound crazy, I don't know. If the Mario Bros movie was on the level of Puss in Boots 2 or Spider-Verse in terms of story, then it would have not performed nearly as well to the public outside of adults, which is why I think Illumination was able to cover all barriers, having moments good enough to be enjoyed by parents, but also so fast and jumpy and colorful for kids. And visually, Illumination really fit with the colorful and loud world of Mario. It felt like the designers behind this movie all came together and knew exactly what would look best in an animated movie of Mario. Every character's proportions are like too perfectly cartoonish, and I appreciate Illumination for this. Don't even get me started on the concept art. I don't know why Illumination's concept art is almost a million times better than the actual movies. There's no doubt about it, after the success of this movie, they're gonna be making a lot more. And considering headrunners and creators at Nintendo are loving this movie as well, and it's success, they are also probably gonna push for more movies, which is just gonna make it more likely to happen. We could get a Link movie, or a Kirby movie, or a Donkey Kong spinoff, and I'm so happy that they finally got confidence in the movie making business. They thought they would never recover after the live action one, so I'm grateful Illumination pulled it off, even if it wasn't a cinematic masterpiece. It was good enough that Nintendo won't shy away from expanding their properties anymore. I definitely see Nintendo becoming the next Marvel in terms of moving to movies and that being their huge thing. It's different because gaming is such a huge medium that I don't think Nintendo will stop being known for making games, but I do think Nintendo will take over the movie market just as Marvel did when they put out Captain America. Despite me being not a gamer whatsoever, I have found myself loving Nintendo games because they're just so cartoony and vibrant, and they have so much personality to them. Basically, my personality put into video games, and their characters are some of the most iconic characters ever made. It's clear they know how to make wholesome, appealing characters, and they're gonna work so well in animated movies. I already want an Earthbound movie. I think I should voice Lucas. I'm just putting it out there. I'm kind of biased. They're probably gonna get Tom Holland or something, whatever. I want an Animal Crossing animated series. I want a Kirby anime. Okay, I searched up Kirby anime to find a picture, and there actually is a Kirby anime. What? What? There's so much potential, and I'm excited for the future. They should still take their time, though, or all of this outro would age terribly. It'll be like when I said I was excited for the Diary of a Wimpy Kid animated movie, and then it came out and everyone was commenting how I was so wrong. So let's hope I don't jinx it. Okay, that's the end of this video. Stay awesome. Hey guys, that's the end of this video. It took me way longer than I expected. I've been trying out this new thing where I work on one video at a time just so I don't forget one or the other. And when this movie came out, I was already working on my Cancelled Animated Movies Part 2, which you should check out. I spent so much time on it. Also, while you're at it, I still have merch from Teespring, so if you want to check that out, that's in the description. This is a few pictures of me at the Mario movie premiere. Uh, that, that's a lie. I did not go to the Mario movie premiere. This is just at a random movie theater. But honestly, I do think I should be invited to an Illumination movie premiere. Imagine me on the red carpet of Despicable Me 4. Illumination will be like, remember when you said Sing was bad and I'll be like, that's not me. That, that wasn't me. Okay, that's it for me. I don't know why I'm doing this part. I already did an outro. Stay awesome again.